Thank you very much. Would you mind waiting a few minutes, please? Now, those are the kind of kids I like to follow. Young, enthusiastic, and no talent. <laughs> oh, I keep goofing that line. What's the matter, hon? Auditionitis? Oh, I guess so. I just keep thinking about that audience full of producers and directors that aren't going to see me if I don't make this show. Look, if you're really good, they'll get to see you whether you make talent showcase or not. Yeah, you're right. You know, like my boyfriend said, if they don't take me, it's their loss. And that is the only way to look at an audition. Absolutely. I only wish I could look at it that way. <laughs> all right, all right, let's get started. Who's next? This girl? No, that girl. <laughs> showed a tender fatherly regard, wishing me wed to one half lunatic, a madcap ruffian, and a swearing jack that thinks with oaths to face the matter out. I'll see thee hanged on Sunday first. Thank you very much. That was very nice. Thank you the shoe. Oh, thank you. I just love doing comedy. Oh, well, you realize you'll need some original comedy material for the final audition. Oh. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, Talent Showcase gives writers a hearing, too, and Shakespeare's already a hit. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> of course, if you do that sort of thing, you'll be perfect for the show. Oh, well, in that case, I do that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, but, 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 honey, listen, I don't know any comedy writers. Yeah. Well, well, wait, wait, wait a minute, honey. I'd like to borrow your notes on a karate article. Yeah, okay, all right. Uh, listen, hang around afterwards, will you, just for a second? Listen, honey, look, all right, yeah, I'll ask around. Yeah, I, well, I promise. Okay, so long. Hey, Jerry, didn't you know a guy who used to write comedy material, um, uh, Ernie something? Uh, Ernie Bernie, he's a cousin of mine. Well, listen, they told Ann she had to have original material for the talent show. So you know Ann, she said she had a writer. Ernie do a great job for her. I'll call him. Uh, seven, eight, four. Is he good? Good. Well, he writes for Red Carter, uh, Benny Berman, Harry Pickles, Buttons. All the greats, huh? Don, you're not gonna get Bob Hope's writing staff to do a special routine for an audition for a talent show. <laughs> I don't know, Jerry, I don't know. Do me a favor, call an old coward. All right, all right, don't get so touchy. I'm only trying to help. All right, here, call. I'm only trying to get the best possible man. You've got a cousin that writes better. Uh, all right, all right, here. Uh, well, uh, go ahead. Uh, 784. <laughs> well? Let me tell you something, Donald. This was really terrific. Now, you've got to teach me how to make the chicken tetrazzini. Uh, that's a secret I learned from my mother. But the trick is to make sure you give it plenty of time to thaw out. <laughs> <laughs> And they say bachelors can't cook. My dear, coffee will be served in the living room. Oh, really? How lovely. But it's still in the kitchen. I'll get it. Oh, I'll get back. Feel free to clean up. <laughs> Hello. Funny you should mention that. Is this Mr. Bernie? Let me be the judge of that. <laughs> Come on up. We're in 312. Was that Jerry's cousin? Let me be the judge of that. <laughs> what? Inside joke. Ernie's on his way up. Oh, gosh. I sure hope he's got something good for me to do at the audition. Now, look, honey, Ernie's not the only comedy writer in New York. Yeah, but he's the only one we know. And anybody who can make a living at it must be pretty good, right? We'll soon find out. Hello, Ernie. 
That's clever. I'm Don Holland. <laughs> Name dropper. Ernie, Ernie, I'd like you to meet Anne Marie. How do you do, Mr. Bernie? I'm pleased to meet you. I've heard very little about you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh. Anne is very grateful that you want to help her out. Oh, it's nothing. I can tell by the applause. <laughs> No, I really am very grateful, Mr. Bernie. In fact, when they told me to find some comedy material, I just didn't know who to turn to. I'm really very grateful. Would you like some coffee? No, thanks. I just had some. <laughs> I figured you're not the low comedy type. So I brought along some of my high satire stuff. Oh, good. That's just the kind of thing I'd like to do. Can you imitate a monkey? Uh, well, yeah, I suppose so. But I don't really think that's the real me. Too bad. I got this great bit about a girl monkey at a dance. And none of the boy monkeys will dance with her. Because she's the only monkey that can't do the monkey. Oh. It has a fantastic ending. You don't like it. Forget it. Can you do a split? Oh, uh, well, sure. But, but somebody has to help me up. It's no good. If somebody has to help you up, it's no good. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I've got an idea. This is the funniest bit in the world. I got a parody on Home on the Range. Listen to this. Oh, give me a home with a... Oh, you can't do this in mixed company. <laughs> do you like doctor monologues? Well, how can she do a doctor monologue? Don't you like high satire? Uh, well, uh, maybe I prefer something a little less satirical. And a lot funnier. <laughs> Don't panic. I can go on like this all night. They're all terrific. Listen to this. Oh, that's not it. <laughs> Here's a tune about a daisy who falls in love with a bumblebee. And you get to sing both parts. <laughs> Listen to this. That's the bumblebee. Now he's going from flower to flower. And this today is the American way. Join the school crossing arm. If you get a stop sign, join the school crossing arm. Yeah! Well? That's great. Terrific. Look, I'll sell you this song, The Daisy and the Bumblebee, The Thing About the Kangaroo Pickpocket, and a funny pair of pants for $50. <laughs> and if they call you back, you say like this. Look, folks, I'd like to do more, but I gotta go. There's a fire sale downtown, and I need a charcoal suit. <laughs> and you go off like this. <laughs> well, I'm just not sure. $40? <laughs> uh, Ernie. Ernie, listen, Ernie, we'll let you know tomorrow, okay? Okay, if that's your final word. But if I don't hear from you by close of business tomorrow, it goes to the highest bidder. Good night, Ernie. Bye, Ernie. That's what I want you to do. Bye, Ernie. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> oh, Donald, I can't do any of that kind of thing at the talent showcase. You want to know something? I wrote better stuff for the freshman review at college. I didn't know you wrote shows. Well, <laughs> well, it was only a college show. No kidding. You never even mentioned it. Well, I, I, I didn't want to make a big thing out of it. I bet they were terrific. Well, it wasn't Broadway, but it did give America this great classic. I'm in love, I'm in love with the tail of the hunt, the tail of the hunt. Do another one. Do you know any more? I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> she was the only girl I ever loved. The only love I've ever known. Oh, why, oh, why did she stand in front of the guns of Navarone? Boom, boom. <laughs> Just the book. Uh, no, no more. I'd rather remember it kindly. You know, Donald, I'll bet if you'd stuck with it, you could have had a great career in show business. As what? As a writer. 
No, you're very good, and you were very good in college. And you know that speech you did last year for the press dinner? That was very funny. It was supposed to be serious. See, you're a natural. <laughs> Doc, you know what I'm thinking? Yeah, do you know what I'm thinking? That I should stop thinking what I'm thinking. Right. <laughs> I am neither ready, willing, nor able to write for you. But, Donald, why? Well, the able part is obvious. I am not a comedy writer. But your songs are adorable. They're very funny, and they're very imaginative. Besides, I've always said it's dangerous to write for the girl you love. You never said that. Well, I'm saying it now. <laughs> oh, Donald. Think of how much fun it would be. I mean, who knows my character as intimately as you do? <laughs> I wish you wouldn't put it that way. Donald. Won't you do it for me? As a favor? I knew you'd put it that way. <laughs> Will you do it? Well, look, honey, you can't expect too much. I mean, I'm not a comedy writer. Well, you know Ernie Bernie. <laughs> but me be the judge of that. <laughs> What's so funny? This piece I'm working on for Anne, it's turning out great. <laughs> and she put the cake in the oven and the phone rang. That's supposed to be funny? Listen, I don't need any opinions from the cousin of Ernie Bernie. Oh, pretty touchy, huh? Don, I told you not to get involved with something like this. What are you gonna do if Anne doesn't like it? Anne will like it. Uh-huh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, as I always say to somebody, when I don't think he knows what he's doing, you know what you're doing. Are you up to the part where you're putting the cake in the oven and the phone rings? Yeah, I, I'm just, I'm just coming to Okay, you. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And then the magazine salesman Donald. comes... Oh, I'm sorry, you're left. Go ahead. Donald, will you please sit down? I just can't concentrate. Okay, all right. I don't want to distract you now. Go ahead. <laughs> Finished? Uh-huh. Well, well, you didn't laugh at the last line. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me what you think. Honestly now. Funny, huh? Donald, do you really want my honest opinion? Of course. Funny, huh? Maybe I'd better read it again. Well, look, this time, stand up here and read it aloud. Come on, right up here. Okay, now set yourself. That's right. I want to make sure you feel comfortable with it. Of course, in comedy, delivery's half the battle. Donald, that's just it. Maybe I'm just not a natural comedian. You don't like it? I didn't say that. It, it's just that I, I don't know if I'll be able to do it justice in, in such a short time. Oh, no, no, no. Now, now don't worry about that. I'm going to work with you every spare moment until you're 100% sure of yourself. Oh, you don't have to do that. You've already done so much, Donald. No, no, I want to. Besides, I'm sure you must have missed some of the little nuances. Yeah, I, I guess I must have. Okay, okay. Uh, shoulders back, head up, okay? Pretty picture. Okay, here we go. Okay. Now. There you are up there on the stage, and somebody will probably come out and say something like, Talent Showcase presents Miss Anne Marie. Go, go. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't get this part about the magazine salesman in the oven. Keep reading. I'm finished. Judy, tell me the truth. Do you think it's funny? Peculiar is a better word for it. Now, what's the big mystery? Who wrote it? Donald. What a rotten shame. <laughs> yes, the terrible thing is, I begged him to write it for me. Now, after he's done all that work, how can I tell him I don't want to use it? Well, Don wouldn't want you to audition with material that just wasn't funny. Well, Judy, I've got this one problem. Every time I rehearse it for him, he laughs. And you don't have a problem. Don has a problem. <laughs> what am I going to do? No, I don't want to hurt his feelings. How do you tell the man you love you don't like his jokes? Very carefully. What are you going to have? Donald, there's something I'd like to discuss with you. Eat first, talk later. Yes, folks, what would be? Honey? 
Oh, well, darling, you order first. I'm still looking. Okay, I'll have a uh, Charlton Heston on pumpernickel and coffee. And I'll have the Julie Andrews on rye. Right. And would you please add some uh, Russian dressing and a little coleslaw to that? A Julie Andrews with coleslaw and Russian on it is a zero mustel. Oh, that would be fine. I remember zero mustel when he was just a poached egg. <laughs> <laughs> Donald, first of all, I want to say that I don't want you to take anything that I'm going to say to you personally. Uh, what shouldn't I take personally? Well, uh, what I mean is, well, if I told you that, well, that I didn't like your necktie, that wouldn't hurt your feelings, would it? No, but it might hurt yours. You gave it to me for Christmas. <laughs> Pardon me, folks. I hope I'm not interrupting anything important. Oh, hello, Ernie. Hi, Ernie. Fortunately, I was passing through on my way to a restaurant when I saw you. <laughs> Have you made up your mind about the material? Well, I, uh... uh Ernie, uh, look, I I'm gonna be perfectly truthful. That isn't necessary. <laughs> well, you see, I'm not really gonna need any of your material, Mr. Bernie. That's a mistake a lot of people have made. Jack Benny, Milton Berle, <laughs> Jackie Gleason. Well, you see, I'm not gonna go to the audition. Oh. Well, in that case, I'll be moving along. But if you change your mind, I'll be having my dinner in India. Ask me why. Why? I hear they've got a new deli. <laughs> <laughs> you see what you're missing? <laughs> he actually thinks it's funny. Well, that was, sort of. Oh, come on, Ann. Why didn't you just tell him his material wasn't right for you instead of that thing about not going to the audition? Well, it's not an easy thing to tell the man you love you don't like his jokes. What'd you say? A man like him, if you don't love his jokes, it, it's hard to tell him when you want to tell him. Listen, it's always kinder to tell the truth, no matter how painful. Do you really believe that, Donald? Oh, of course. All creative people have to learn to live with that kind of pain. I sincerely hope so. Huh? Because I'm not going, Donald. What do you mean you're not going? Don't you see, when you love a person, that person doesn't have to be perfect. Huh? Donald, don't you know what I'm trying to say? Well, maybe if you tried saying it in English. <laughs> Donald, I want you to know that I wouldn't think any less of you because I don't think that your comedy material is funny. Oh. You believe that, don't you? Why are you telling me this now, after all those hours of rehearsal? Why didn't you tell me three days ago? Well, I didn't want to hurt your feelings. <laughs> what changed your mind? Well, no, you're just being childish. I mean, I'm the one that's not going to do the show. You just did it as a favor to me, right? Yeah, right, right. So let's not be ungrateful. To be objective about it, I happen to think you have a very strong piece of material, so it's my opinion against yours. Well, would you respect Judy's opinion? Yeah, yeah, let's show it to her. She's got a good sense of humor. Well, I already did, and she didn't think it was funny. What does she know? <laughs> At least she can do is let the producer of the show decide. You're reading my Charlton Heston. <laughs> oh, Donald, I'm so sorry. Thanks for the karate information. What happened? Try to break a board with my hand. Did it break? Everything but the board. <laughs> Kidding. Jerry, do me a favor. We are all kidding aside. I got a lot of respect for your opinion. Will you take a look at this? And didn't like it, right? Come on, come on. R read it, will you please? Uh, hi, Jerry. Hi. Hi, Donald. Hello, Ann. Well, uh, the author meets the critic. <laughs> Donald. Go right on. I'm listening. Donald. If it's about the audition, there's no need to discuss it. I've completely forgotten about it. Donald, I was wondering if you might be free about 5 o'clock today. Well, I, uh, I've got a lot of work to do today. Oh. Well, that's too bad. I was hoping you might be able to make it to the audition. You're going ahead with it? I don't understand. Well, it's a lot of things. But you were right. 
I think we should leave it to the producer. You know something? For a temperamental actress, you're pretty reasonable. <laughs> Is five o'clock okay, then? Perfect. One more thing. Extremely reasonable. <laughs> Well, she gonna do it. No. What are you so shocked about? I read it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm an audition going on. But I'm looking for a girl that's in here. You can't be Anne Marie, right over there. Do you mind if I just go in there? Just thank, thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks. you make a fool out of yourself because of me. Oh, Donald, I want to. I mean, I, I won't be. Anne, Anne, you were right. I took a good, long, hard, objective second look at that material. Honey, it isn't funny. Donald, I took a second look at that material, too. And you know what? I laughed. Honest, I laughed. A few times. And what's worse, I'd have let you stand up there and be embarrassed because I was so sure I was right. Anne-Marie. Present. You see, I'm going on next. Anne-Marie? Yes, I'm coming. Anne, Anne don't be foolish. Uh, is, is, what seems to be the trouble? Uh, well, nothing. I was just about to say goodbye. Yeah, goodbye, sir. Donald, will you please? Is there something I can do? No, nothing, sir. Nothing. I'm ready, Mr. Hanley, with my original comedy monologue. A, a very bad comedy monologue, Mr. Hanley, and it wouldn't be fair to judge Anne with that material. Well, who are you to say the material is bad? Uh, the author. <laughs> I'd say he'd earn the right to an opinion. Well, oh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, I'm not a comedy writer. Well, you're better than Ernie Bernie. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. That's like saying rabies is better than smallpox. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm beginning to see your point. I don't think you really do, Mr. Hanley. You see, all of this is really your fault, because you said I needed original comedy material. So I went to Donald, who has this friend Jerry, who has this cousin, Ernie Bernie, who has all these terrible jokes about monkeys who can't do the monkey and joining the school crossing guard. And it's all kinds of terrible songs. And Donald said he could do better than that, like he did when he was in college studying journalism. Uh, Anne, I don't really think no, Mr. No, Hammond. no, let her finish. Anyway, I thought that Attila the Hun and the guns of Navarone were so cute. So I asked Donald to write something funny, which he didn't want to do. But then he wrote it and it wasn't so funny, so we had this fight because Judy didn't like it either. But Leon did, the obstetrician. And then I got all worried and Don got all upset because I ate his Charlton Heston. Pardon? Oh, well, the important thing is I'm not a judge. And when you love a person and you don't know how to tell him you don't like his jokes, well, you'd rather not have a career at all. Because the important thing is we found out how we feel about each other. And if you could ever give me this opportunity again, I certainly would appreciate it. And I'd rather never know if you think Donald's material is funnier or Ernie Bernie's or any Bernie's uh, buddies. And I, I certainly have enjoyed this experience very much. And, and thank you. Jerry, we're back now. Now listen, you better get on about your business so I can get some work done. Okay, if that's your final word. Final word. Hi. Oh, Mr. Bauman, step right into my office. <laughs> What's with you two? We're celebrating. What for? I'm not going to do the show. <laughs> that figures. Failure's gone to your head. <laughs> well, till we meet again. At the delicatessen at six. I'll be waiting. Order me an Anne Marie rare with plenty of pepper. <laughs> and if you get there first, order me a Donald Hollinger. Think you can take all that ham? <laughs> what are you two talking about? The best combination in town. Should never ask. Oh, no sense of humor. I'll say. <laughs> <laughs>